Hey everyone, Professor Baldwin here to show you how to set up your D2L gradebook. It's best to set your gradebook up before students start working in the course, because sometimes when you make a change to the gradebook, it can send notifications to your students. So our first step is to go to the grade section of your D2L course. Now, depending on the stage of your course, you may see a different screen. This is what I see because I've already imported some graded discussions and assignments from a previous course. But notice how my calculated grade is a crazy percentage and not 100% like it should be. We're going to fix that later on. So to set up the gradebook, you want to click on this setup wizard. I'm really not sure why it's called a wizard since it doesn't just magically create my gradebook for me. Wouldn't a real wizard just wave their wand or something and poof? Oh well, okay. So now that we're in this setup wizard, let's click start at the bottom of the page and we'll walk through the seven steps to set up our gradebook. Now step one is your grading system. You can choose weighted, points, or formula. Most courses follow a weighted system. That means that your grades are in categories or groups and the total groups sum to 100% of the final grade. For instance, my class has three categories, homework, discussions, and exams. You're going to select the grading system that works for your course and then click continue. Now, step two wants to know how your final grade is released to the students. A calculated final grade means the D2L program does the math for you. Adjusted final grade means you may modify the calculations and give a different grade. I'm all about less work, so I use calculated final grade and have D2L do all of the math for me. Again, make your selection and then click continue. Step three is grade calculations. The first option, drop ungraded items, means that the student's current grade is only based on the items which have been graded where treat ungraded items as zero counts every single gradebook item as a zero until you insert a grade. With the treat ungraded items as zero option, a student shows as failing until they have completed a large percentage of the work. That creates panic. Don't choose this option, treat ungraded items as zero, unless you like panic, chaos, and an extremely full inbox. So select drop ungraded items. You'll also want this automatically keep final grades updated box checked. This means D2L is constantly calculating the student's correct grade. So every time you enter a new grade, it updates the student's current grade. Again, make your selections. This first one is less emails. The second one, many emails from students, and then click continue. Now in step four, we're picking our default grade scheme. This is what type of grade you want students to see. It's either a percentage or a letter grade. I typically use letter grades for my developmental courses because they understand that a C is passing, but they don't always understand that a 70% is a C. There's really no right or wrong choice here, but if you pick letter grades, check the preview here on the right and make sure that these values are accurate for your course. We'll use percentage this time. Make the selection again and click continue. Now in step five, this is about how you as the instructor see the gradebook. So how many decimal places do you wanna see for each graded item? So this really depends on how you grade. My assignments rarely have decimal places, so I use zero as the number of decimal places to display. You can pick from zero to five decimal places, and if you pick a number and later change your mind, you can always go back through this wizard and change it. So make a selection and click continue. Now step six is the student view of the gradebook. This is what your students will see. So these settings, again, are based on how you grade in your individual course. For my course, assignments have varying point values. 
For instance, one math homework could be 24 points and another is 30 points. So I share the points grade so that my students can see how many points they got for each assignment out of the total points for that assignment. Weighted grade, this is only available if you chose weighted grade at the beginning of the wizard. And if you select this, it shows students this assignment grade as a percentage of the total course grade. Then grade scheme symbol, this is based on the scheme you have set up. So your students would see something like A or good. And probably my favorite is the grade scheme color. This colors the graded item based on the grade the student has earned. So you see shades from blue to red. Blue for an A, red for an F. I love this feature as an instructor because it allows me to do a quick visual check of an individual assignment or of a student. So if I see a lot of red for one student, I know I need to reach out to that student to see what's going on. And if I see a lot of red for an assignment, I might need to look into that assignment and rethink what that assignment is asking. So it's a great way to assess your course and also make your course a little more equitable. Now, the next option is decimals displayed. So again, how many decimal places do you want students to see? Then we have characters. If you use textual grades, this is how many characters you want the students to see in the window. And our last option is display the final grade calculation. This just allows students to see how their final grade is calculated. Again, make your choices and then click continue. Now we're in step seven. Step seven is really just a summary of everything you've selected in the six previous steps. So you'll want to review everything and make sure you made the choices that you wanted. This is the final step, but it's not telling you that when you click finish, you can't change anything ever again. If you get working in your grade book and realize maybe you should have made a different choice somewhere, you can always go back through the wizard and make changes to different areas. So do a quick review and make sure it looks like what you think it should be and click finish. So now we've made our selections. So let's go back and see what our grade book actually looks like. We'll click enter grades here on the top left. So my grade book doesn't really look different. I still have this crazy 50% calculated grade sum, which isn't right. Um, that's because we haven't set up those weighted categories and we'll get there. First, I want you to look at this first column and this is the calculated final grade for Arnie. Notice that there isn't anything showing. To reduce the number of emails you get from a student asking, what's my grade? We want to change the settings for this calculated grade column so that it shows the final grade as a percentage. So to do that, we want to come up to the top right and click the settings gear. Now in settings, you want to click grade scheme symbol. Now grade scheme symbol refers to the selection that we made in step four of the wizard. This is when we decided if we wanted our final grade to show as a letter grade or a percent. So whatever we selected there is what is going to show in that first column to our student. Now you can also select this weighted grade. This will tell the students the fraction of their grade. So how many points they've earned out of how many total points possible. Make the selections at a minimum. You want this grade scheme symbol and then click save. The settings get updated, the screen gets refreshed, and then click close. Now we're gonna go back to our grades by clicking enter grades on the top left. And if we look in that first column near Arnie's grade, we see some other categories. We see that weighted grade, so a fraction or a proportion of grades earned out of grades possible and then we see the percent which is that grade scheme symbol so now we need to finish setting up our grade book so that we can set the categories for each of our grading groups and fix this goofy calculated grade sums to 50 percent 
To do that, we need to click Manage Grades here on the top left. Now at the top, we're going to click New and then select Category. Categories are the groups of assignments, where items are the individual assi assignments. So select Category. My first category is Homework. And homework for my course is 10%, so I give it a weight of 10. Now we have a lot of other options to consider. Um, this first box, you can allow the category grade to exceed the weight. So if you're going to allow bonus points or something, you would check that box. Distribution. This is how you want that weight distributed among all of the assignments. All of my homework assignments are weighted the same. So I want to select distribute weight evenly across all items. And when I do that, look, I have this option to drop the highest non-bonus item or drop the lowest. This is great if you have that option for your students to drop their lowest homework grade. You would enter how many of those you would drop. Then display options. For the students, you can display the class average so they can see how other students have scored on that particular assignment, um, as well as the distribution of grades. And then if you want this grade to appear different than any of the other options you set up previously, you would select this box and then choose how to change those options. Make all of your selections, and then since we have more categories to create, we're going to click Save and New. A little computer magic, and now I'm setting up my last category, which are the exams and show work. For my course, that has a weight of 80%, so I entered that weight of 80%. Again, all of my exams are going to be distributed evenly, so I check that box. And since this is my last category, I'm going to click Save and Close. So now that we have all of our categories, we need to move the existing assignments into those categories. Because just by adding categories, we added more percentage points to our calculated grade. Notice that now we have a calculated grade, grade that sums to 150%. So to fix that, we're going to click this box just below Bulk Edit. That selects every single grade item for my course. And then I'm going to click on Bulk Edit. Now, you may need to zoom out in your browser window so that you can see the far left column, which is the name of your assignment, and the far right column, which is the category. What you're doing is you're going to look at the grade item name. So my first one is introduction, which is the discussion. And then I'm going to choose the correct category for that item to be placed into. Since introduction is a discussion, I'm going to select discussion. And then my next one is an exam review discussion board. See if I scroll over, it's a discussion. So again, I'm going to select discussion. You're going to do this for all of your assignments to get them all into categories. So give me a second, I'll do all that and be right back. Okay, so now I have selected a category for each of my graded assignments and this is also a great place to check that the point values are correct. So if you look in this fourth column, it says max points. At the very bottom, I have two exam show work assignments that say 10 points. That's not correct. So I fat fingered something when I was setting those up and I can change that here by making them 100 points. Now, a quick check on the right, everything has been assigned a category, so I'm ready to click Save. So now you can see our categories. Those are the grade items that are shifted furthest to the left. And all of the grade items or the individual assignments are slightly indented under each of those categories. Now, I don't have any items under homework because all of my homework comes from an outside source, my math lab. And the next tutorial will show you how to link those assignments and then assign them into that category. 
But if I scroll down, I can see that all of my existing items are actually within a category. That's it for how to set up the gradebook in your D2L course. If you're using My Math Lab, the next step is to sync your My Math Lab gradebook to the D2L gradebook. Watch my syncing MML gradebook to D2L tutorial for additional help with that. And if you enjoyed this video or learned anything, leave a like and hit subscribe.